There is one seed spoiled in this video, so if you don't want any spoilers at all, uh, please come back to the video after you've seen the movie, because I did like this scene, yeah. This breakdown features the wonderful Penguin Z Zero, or Charlie, as you may know him. I hope he doesn't mind this tiny channel using his video, because he's not the only person referencing it, but he's obviously available on YouTube, so I just took the clip. I hope that's okay with him. Not that I think he's ever going to notice a 200 follower um, channel. You know, there is that. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so Alien Romulus dropped today, and I've seen the reviews. I just want to discuss something about Xenomorphs. There seem to be being missed a lot in the reviews. It's involving a certain character being ultimately rescued by a Xenomorph. I say rescued in quotations because that's the word I've seen. So, Rain and Andy jump, and they're going up however there is a gravity purge coming where what happens is it's going to turn gravity back on shortly and they're getting like a countdown letting them know that it's coming so andy and rain are they've propelled themselves upward they're extremely high up going up an elevator shaft and andy manages to grab onto the ladder right before the gravity purge kicks in uh, reigniting gravity rain however is a little too far away so she's unable to grab it, and gravity flicks back on, so now she's starting to fall. She's plummeting back towards the bottom of the ship through this elevator shaft. It's terminal velocity, she's going to die unless something happens, but Andy can't do anything. He's way up on that ladder, so she's falling, and it's absolutely going to kill her. And then out of nowhere, a xenomorph with its fucking tail stops her fall, grabs her, and brings her to the side. It saves her life. The Xenomorph saves her life. The fucking thing was fishing for like a good Samaritan award or something. The truth is, Xenomorphs are not outright killers. Everybody says they are, or thinks they are, um, but they're not. If you read the books for context, you'll understand that their primary purpose is to reproduce. Constantly reproduce, because they have such short lifespans. So as soon as a Xenomorph is born, it will very, very quickly grow into adulthood. Often within a day. It will go from a tiny little thing that pops out of people's chests and it will go and it will hide and it will grow exponentially until you get essentially what in the books Parker and Ripley see takes Brett um, and they see it as a full formed beast mere hours after it's been born. So their priority is always to reproduce, just to quickly reproduce, get everyone on board hosting and take over. That's their plan. So all these complaints about a xenomorph rescuing a certain character as they fall is very, very concurrent with how they work. Because to waste a good host, a smart creature's not going to do that. So the victims, male and female, go through a process called egg morphing. We've really only seen males go through it so far with Brett. Dallas and Carter Burke, although I think that scene was cut, and Newt is tied up for one, but there's an egg in that scene. Other films I don't really give a shit about. I certainly don't give a shit about Alien Covenant. So we see those captured, some kind of alien spit up, form solid on them to pin them to the walls, which is pretty crazy, but it's pretty cool. We only ever see, really, aggressors being outright killed. So in Alien, you get Brett, who is the first abducted, and you see him later in the cutscene where Ripley stumbles in to the cocoon room and Dallas asks her to off him, and Brett is on the wall next to him. You do get a shot of him, and he's turning into an egg. So he's the first to go, well, second to go, because Kane's already birthed the alien, so he's already been through the reproductive process of a xenomorph. Brett is about to go through it, or is becoming an egg. Dallas then goes, and he is carried off and hooked to a wall. We know he's not dead out right, even though the um, tunnel jump scare. So he's dragged off, printed on the wall, and maybe has something planted in him because he's asking to die, or maybe the enzymes are turning him into an egg at that point. We don't know. I assume he's being turned into an egg because he's right next to Brett. After that, Ash dies. He's an android, so they can't reproduce him anyway. Alien isolation. Xenomorphs don't even see them as a threat. They ignore them because they can't host them. If they were just outright vicious beings, they'd kill all the androids too. But they don't. They just don't. Because they're looking to reproduce. They don't care otherwise. We don't see what happens to Lambert, although it is implied very heavily that bad stuff happens to her. But by the time she'd be cocooned, Ripley would be off the ship, so we don't see it. The one that dies outright is Parker. 
and that's because the xenomorph is heading for Lambert and Parker ambushes it and it turns around and hits him and breaks his neck. I do understand that in the films it's dragged out uh, more than it is in the book. In the book, bam, dead, neck broken. In the film it's more dragged out but it is still canon that the alien is in fact going for Lambert and Parker attacks it and it turns and deals with Parker in a more brutal manner than more brutal? I mean, getting your neck broken is pretty brutal, but a more screen unfriendly way of dying. Um, I think that's so we get to see Lambert's fear as she watches the alien destroy him, knowing that it's coming for her next. That's a defensive lash out. It's not the aggressor in that situation. Parker is, so it kills him and then gets Lambert. We don't see what happens to Lambert, but the assumption is something pretty gross, uh, as you can see in the DVD extras or read about whenever you want. Obviously, Ripley ends up with one insider for Alien 3, so reproduction there is also the uh, premise, the, the necessary reproduction there is obviously the, the end goal for her, as I'm sure it would be in Alien, and you know, there are facehugger attacks in Aliens as well. If we look at Aliens, the only two real non-aggressors towards the creatures are Newt, who ends up strapped to a wall and Ripley saves her. Um, she's obviously going into reproductive mode. There obviously, there's a face hugger, I think, next to her. And Carter Burke, who gets hooked to a wall. That is also a deleted scene, I believe. Um, and he's in a re reproductive state. Everyone else is an aggressor. The Marines are all aggressive. They're firing guns. They're getting killed left and right. But we don't necessarily see what happens to all of them. So they could also be uh, being bred as well. So, it's worth considering that that scene's not really that stupid when you consider that to the Xenomorph, a certain character is perfect reproductive material, especially as the other person is an android. Thank you so much for watching my video chatting absolute garbage as usual. Um, I hope you appreciate it, the knowledge. And I hope you view that particular scene or the xenomorph in a, in a new light, one that is not just predatory menace, but is actually a survivor and a brilliant minded creature of intelligence and cunning. I hope it increases your enjoyment of the film. Also, if you want to support me, please feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video that is. If not, no problem. I also have a Patreon, which will be linked in the description. It's also on my channel, but you know, just enjoy the video. Thank you so much. about your chances, but you have my sympathies. <laughs>